Um, don't get put off by the length of this video. You might want to watch it in um, its different sections and you can look at the notes in the space below to find out when those start. But uh, I want to go through four important and interesting things about the EE and how my research is going at the moment. I'm going to show you how I'm using JSTOR as a database to gather my preliminary ideas together. Then going to show you how I'm suffering from many dead ends. Um, I'm not frustrated, I'm actually pleased that I'm hitting these dead ends because it's an opportunity I'm starting to eliminate what I want to do and what I'm interested in. I also then in part three want to show you how my research question is starting to gather momentum and starting to get some focus but I'm still nowhere near um, a final research question because I need time and research and reading and reflection. And in the final section, um, a quick IT skill about how to create a hanging indent in a work cited list, which you'll eventually need to do, so you might as well learn that skill now, it's quick and easy. So um, I hope you enjoy. Let's take a look at how I'm keeping on top and organized of my reading so far. Here I am in JSTOR, uh, a very good database for the humanities. You may be lo looking at a different area. I've logged into the account using ISB passwords. I'm now going to do a very simple search for economics, photography, and migrants. It's what I'm interested in doing. It's what I'm reading on about at the moment. So let's click search and let's look to see if anything has grabbed my attention. There's ton 900 results and later on in the process when I'm being more focused I will narrow things down when I'm searching for particular articles maybe using publication dates or narrowing it down from the subject area 900 simply is too much for me so we can see we've got a ton of interesting hits written by professors um, I know this is a famous photographer um, and it's about social documentary um, over in California. It's written in 2006. I'm interested in reading more. That alone has got my attention. It might prove to be nothing in the end. Uh, however, I'm going to download it. I accept the terms and conditions, which means um, I'm limited in how I share this or if I'm allowed to share it at all. Lots of information here that's going to be helpful for my works cited list. And you can see the PDF is brilliant there, easy for me. I'm going to download that and put it on my iPad because um, I know that's helpful in my workflow. But if I was to return to the search results, and you see here in JSTOR, I can cite this item. So even if this might not prove to be uh, important to me later I'm going to get that information for me now MLA is what we promote here at ISB so I'm going to copy that look it's all done I'm going to check it later but that's all done for me and the person's name is Street so I'm going to now go to my work cited list and I'm going to head down to S going to very simply paste it in. Now the formatting is different and I'll need to check it. I'm not happy that it's in capital letters for example. So there's lots for me to continue doing. That alone isn't enough um, but it's helpful because now I've got a very solid basis of an organized work cited list. Lots of these citations will be deleted because they're not important to me in the long run. Um, but now I've got it here ready uh, for any time I need it. So that's very helpful indeed. You know, let's take a look at how my research has evolved and developed since I've started reading uh, academic journal articles. At first I was interested in economics and art and I picked up on some themes around the classroom um, but then I moved into value and auction and realized that there was some relevant news recently with Banksy shredding some art in an auction house, moving on to investment. You have to excuse the bird, I'm sitting in a garden here. I've also been slightly tempted to look at issues around co uh or Thai kickboxing. Um, they haven't yet led to anything, but I'm aware that 
you know, that could be a, something I'm interested in doing. But so far, my preliminary research has been most fruitful around this particular area. Again, very broad at the moment, economics, photography and migrants. A lot of the reading has led to dead ends and I haven't really been inspired or got any further ideas from that. But I did come across this particular article written by Carr in 2011 which highlighted the work of a very famous photographer, Sebastião Salgado, who is a famous Brazilian photographer um, and has done a lot of uh, work, years of work, on the issue of labor and migrants. So that's kind of a treasure trove for me. And I managed to find other, due to this article car, I managed to find other articles that also inspired me, that led me to further um, ideas, questions, which we're going to look at later. Uh, some, some of it was dead end, but it allowed me to think about what I might do with my EE. I then read a different paper to do with economics, photography and migrants, but it was about how the issue of HIV and AIDS is portrayed in photography. And it read, led to some really interesting thoughts um, that I can now perhaps even connect with this reading and try to create a, a new insight by combining ideas. But what I want you to realize is that all of these papers here, the one about HIV AIDS and these have all mentioned very similar um, big names. Now I'm already aware of Sontag, Berger for example, but um, this one Strauss I hadn't heard of, but he was mentioned in all of these articles. So now I'm very keen to find out more about his ideas and maybe even get some of his writing or try and find his book in the library or so on. So that's how a research question in the early stages develops. It's how your ideas progress. Um, these ideas and research questions don't fall on your lap like a gift from heaven. They come through reading, they come through research um, by making connections and seeing new ways or, or gaps in the literature that you can contribute to. So keep that in mind. Don't expect a research question just to pop into your head. It is developed over time, okay? Um, thank you very much. short video, I'd like to talk to you about how my research question is, is looking and progressing. You may recognize some of what I'm going to show you through the early bird task known as the research trail. So here we are in October 2018 and I have a broad beginning, economics and art. And like you've seen earlier in the video how that was interesting but didn't lead me to much focus. Just a simple little bit more uh, detail in my search, photography and migrants. I'm narrowing it down into an area of particular interest. Now, Sebastio Sergado is extremely famous and I knew of his work before this research began, but I wasn't aware of all the criticism that, that has been uh, written against him. And this is just a snapshot of some of the things I've uncovered in my research. For example, can suffering be too beautiful when he was portraying the issues of migrants and manual labor in his previous work. So it led me to create my own questions about how explanatory notes within photojournalism can have an impact. Does photography produce knowledge and the impact it might have? Is it important for the photographer to give the subjects of the photography uh, a name, for example? Um, and there seems to be an underlying theme within South Aldo's work that has a heavy Christian bias and what impact might that have? Uh, generally speaking, that research um, has want, made me want to follow up more on particular readings and this one is a priority of mine. I only found that out because of this reading, you see. But I also uncovered a great article which has really sparked my imagination. Um, it wasn't anything to do with migrants, but it came up in my general database searching about how HIV and AIDS in Africa has been portrayed in photography and I came across this new type of categorization that I wasn't familiar with uh, 
uh, a few days ago and how photography can be subjective and it creates perceptions of victimhood and um, embeds stereotypes. Um, one particular professor or group of researchers provided cameras to people with HIV AIDS to give local representation and this has created um, more reading for me to follow up on um, because of, in this reading these names were cited so it's made me want to go off and do more research and try and continue with my uh, thinking about these topics. So I, I very much doubt that these will be my final research questions. I know they're not anywhere near where I want them to be, um, but it's a start. And I'm looking perhaps at recreating a study that I saw in the HIV AIDS article, but perhaps changing the focus and on my own small scale, looking at how migrants in Bangkok, um, I, I, that's all I know at the moment. I'll need to do more research and reading. Um, I, I could also perhaps at the moment, thanks to my reading, think about how the refugee crisis in, in Myanmar or Burma was portrayed in the press and if certain photographic images have had more impact than others and why that might be and if there's any art, political ideology behind that and it, perhaps even now to move towards more um, the economics focus that I wanted to potentially bring in I, I just very very easy idea uh, and it's nowhere near fleshed out enough talking about financial support and donations and, and the relationship between photographic images being used. I've got no idea about that, that's just an idea off the top of my head which doesn't have any more substance to it but it's something that I've written down in order to remember and maybe read more about. So my questions and concerns at the moment are, well economics doesn't feel like a natural fit here um, and I'll need to now focus more on my economic reading because my reading so far has been based around visual art and photography. I'd like to talk to a, a few experts, maybe the art teachers. I'm also aware that this could, if I follow the way um, news has, and images are, are used, perhaps it might take me down a language EE. -E. I've just got no idea at the moment. I, I'm not getting nervous, I'm not getting frustrated. I'm actually enjoying the research process. So there you are, that's a few minutes on how my research question is progressing at the moment. Nowhere near finished, and um, it's deadline's not until December, so that's when I must try and make uh, a more conscious effort to pin down something more, sus more substantial. In this short video, let's take a quick look at how to be organized during the research phase. Notice, here's my work cited list. Here are all the papers I have read, or am reading, or will read. I've got their MLA citations already, and I've put them in alphabetical order. A, B, C, D, E, F. The color coding is simply for me. Everybody's going to have their own notes to themselves. Yellow, I've got questions about why are they in capitals. Green, I found particularly useful. And red, I think is wrong. You see, these are computer generated MLA citations. But the other thing you may notice is that there's yet no hanging indents. So I'm going to highlight all of my work cited lists so far. Now, don't let that intimidate you. I ha I'm not going to include them all. I, they're just my early readings, titles and abstracts that have got my attention. It needs to be a 0.5 hanging indent. So let us drag all of this across. Notice I've picked up both of those icons and now there's a 0.5 hanging indent. But actually what you've got to do is move the top bit back to its original place. So the family name now is the first letter, first word popping out, very easy to see, and the rest of the citation is uh, hanging off it. Uh, there's more to do, more to tidy up later uh, with the formatting, but for now, that's good. Thank you. Okay, I hope that was useful. Um, 
always come to see me if you or drop me an email if you have any questions. Um, the EE isn't easy, but it's possible that you can um, get frustrated thinking that you're the only one suffering from um, difficulties or, or lack of inspiration. Um, trust me that these things come with time and with reading and research and thinking. So um, keep at it and keep trying to fill in your research proposal with ideas and links and keep organized and um, good luck.